Hey, what's up, Kim peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We're going to explain how the lab process of calorimetry calor. can be used to determine the change in heat energy during a chemical reaction or phase change. As always, breaking it down, we are going to one, define calorimetry. Calor. Two, we're going to apply the formula for heat, or Q equals MC delta D, to calorimetry calor. data. And then finally, three, we're gonna apply the law of conservation of energy to calorimetry. Calor. All right, so first, let's just define calorimetry. What the heck is it? It's just an experimental technique that's used to measure the change in energy of a chemical reaction or phase change. Now, to do that, we're gonna use what's called a calorimeter. And as you take a look at your screen, you've got an example of a calorimeter. Really, just an insulated container. And generally, we fill that calorimeter with water. And then the reaction or phase change occurs in the water bath. All right, so calorimetry basically requires you to understand a few things. First, we're generally gonna put the chemical reaction or phase change in contact with a water bath. Now, why are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna use the formula for heat to determine the amount of heat absorbed or released by the water bath. And that's important because we can then measure the change in temperature of the water bath and we know the specific heat of water to be 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So it makes solving the formula for heat pretty easy. I mean, take a look at that formula. We'll know the mass, we know the specific heat of water, and then we can measure the temperature change to determine the amount of heat absorbed or released. And then importantly, we need to keep in mind the law of conservation of energy. And this states the energy that's absorbed or released by the system or your chemical reaction is equal to the energy absorbed or released by the surroundings. And generally that's our water bath. And because it's occurring in a calorimeter or an insulated container, we're gonna assume no heat loss. Now check out this thrilling image and a couple of mathematical equations to help you wrap your mind around this. Imagine this yellow box represents our calorimeter, insulated container. The blue represents our water and the white represents our chemical system or chemical reaction. It's important to recognize that the law of conservation of energy indicates that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Or in other words, recognize the heat energy that's absorbed by the system is equal to the amount of heat energy released by the surroundings or vice versa. And because Q is equal to the formula MC delta T, positive MC delta T equals negative MC delta T. Take a moment, think about that formula, examine the image that's on your screen and in your notes. All right, lastly, this idea of calorimetry or studying the changes in heat energy is done in what's called a calorimeter. And we're gonna use what's called a coffee cup calorimeter. Really fancy piece of equipment, just a styrofoam cup. And although you might think that that's pretty low quality, you can actually get some pretty good results from a styrofoam coffee cup calorimeter. However, we also have what are called bomb calorimeters. And these are just far more insulated containers than your typical styrofoam coffee cup. And because of that greater amount of insulation, we reduce even further the amount of heat that's lost to the outside surroundings, giving us just better data. So take a look at your screen. Again, you've got this image in your notes. Recognize that these are calorimeters, which we will use to perform calorimetry experiments. Just insulated containers that prevent the heat loss to the outside surroundings, allowing us to measure the heat transferred from the chemical reaction or chemical system to the body of water. All right, that does it for this video. Be sure to check out some of those guided practice problems to get you comfortable with some of the calorimetry type problems that we're gonna do in class. Have a fantastic day.